So today we're going to show how to create an R package inside of RStudio. Um, and so it's really not too complicated if you take advantage of a few tools that have been released recently. So we can start off by going uh, and creating a new project in RStudio. So we'll create a new project uh, in a new directory and we'll call this the name of our package. So I'll call it my package uh, and I'll go ahead and create this project. All right, so now we're inside my package, and the first thing we want to do um, is install a couple of tools that are going to be useful in building our package. So um, we can run the commands install.packages, and uh, we're going to install two different tools. The first one is called dev tools that's useful for helping us compile and build and uh, create our, our, our packages. Um, and so we can run that, and on my computer, actually, I have it already installed, so... Um, there's not too much work to do. You may have a whole bunch of packages to install. Um, and then the other one we're going to install is called Roxygen, R-O-X-Y-G-E-N, and we want Roxygen 2. So we'll run this as well, install packages Roxygen 2. All right, and so we have both packages now. Um, now the one caveat here is that the, the current version of DevTools that's available on CRAN, which is where you're installing from uh, when you run install packages, uh, is actually doesn't have some of the features that we want to use today. Um, so we're going to need to get the most up-to-date package. Now, um, Hadley Wickham, the author of DevTools, keeps his code on GitHub. And within DevTools, if we go ahead and load that into our environment, um, we can run a function, which again, if you're watching this video and more than a few months, then you, this step probably won't be necessary. Um, but we can run a command called install from GitHub. So install underscore GitHub. Uh, the package we want to install is called DevTools, and the username is Hadley. Um, and so if we run this command, that'll actually go out to GitHub and get the most recent version of the package and install it instead of the version that we had initially. Um, so again, that just has a couple of features that we want to make use of today that, that otherwise wouldn't have been available. Okay, so we've got the packages that we need installed. Um, and now the next thing we need to do is teach our studio uh, that this project that we're working on is actually gonna be a package. So in order to do that, we go into the build tab and click on configure build tools. Uh, right now, it's not, it doesn't have any build tools configured. So we wanna go ahead and configure this, this project as a package. So I click package and then it gives me a few different options. Most of these you can ignore for now. Um, but uh, the one that we're interested in is generating documentation with Roxygen. So Roxygen is a package, again, which we just installed. Um, it's a package which allows you to write your uh, code for your, to document your functions um, just within your R code, and it'll automatically generate all the, the necessary side effects for you, which is really convenient and saves you a lot of time. So um, we want to use Roxygen, and so uh, the first question here is basically asking which of these fields do you want Roxygen to handle for you? Um, typically, I'll just let Roxygen handle all of them. Uh, and then the second section here is, is configuring uh, when we want Roxygen to um, kind of reload our, uh, our documentation. And usually I just leave all three of these checked so that I know my documentation's up to date. So I'll click OK, and we don't need to worry about any of the rest of this right now. So I'll click OK, and that's going to refresh this page. And um, the new tab that we have here is this Build tab. Um, and so our studio is aware that we're now building an R package, and it's going to help us do that. So. Uh, the organization of an R package is pretty simple actually. So at the most basic level you just have R code and then you have um, a couple of extra files that just kind of define the package. So R code belongs in a directory called R. Uh, so we'll just create a directory, it's capital letter R. And then we can create a new file that we save in there. Um, you can create as many files as you want. A lot of times the convention is to create uh, one file per function that uh, is available in your package. But we'll go ahead and just create a single function in this file here that just squares a number. So it takes in a variable x and returns x squared. Um, so pretty simple function. So I'll save this and uh, we'll just save it here in R. We'll call this file power.r. So if you go into the R directory, you see we have one file. It's called power.r and it happens to have one function in it. So great, we've got, a, we've got a function now and we've got a file. Um, we've got some R code in our package. So the next step we want to do is we want to create a what's called a description file. Now you can do that manually if you want. Um, and there is a function called package.skeleton that comes with R that you can use. But uh, I prefer to use the function that comes in DevTools. Uh, the function in DevTools is called load all. 
and you can use this in the future to kind of update your your R package, and it'll kind of reload some of the some of the code that you may have changed. Um, but if you run it initially in a project that doesn't have any description file, um, then it'll actually create that file for you. So you can see we got this new file here, description. And uh, this is the basic skeleton of, of kind of what you're going to define in your R package. Um, and so the only one that I usually add would be maintainer. Um, but basically this is just some basic information. This is your, pro this is your package name. Um, here we can have a quick title of it, um, a package I made. And we'll have a description. So this is a sample package. Uh, we can have a version, we can have an author, so I'll put myself here and make up some email. Uh, and again, I'm the maintainer as well, so I'll put that here. Uh, depends, you can put different packages that your package may depend on. Um, there's a better way to do this actually with, with importing, which you can look up if you really want to you know, publish a package on CRAN or something. Um, but for now, basically, if you had any dependencies, you could just throw them here, although there's, there are better ways to do it. Um, and then it's a good idea to specify a license for it, so I'll, I'll specify that I'm under the MIT license for this package. Okay, so I'll save it, and now if I run load all again, it'll actually check the description file for me and let me know if there are any errors. Um, if it doesn't print out any warnings, then that means we're good to go. So this is a valid description file, um, and so I'll go ahead and close this. So now we have our description file, and we have our R code. Um, so we can actually go ahead and build this package. So I'm clicking the Build and Reload button, and what that does is it's going to build my package from source, uh, and then it's going to load my package into the current R session. So actually, if I go and look into the list of packages that are um, installed on my machine, you can see I have this new package called My Package, and it's loaded right now. But if I click on it, um, there aren't any help pages for it, because all we've done at this point is we've created some code, but we haven't created any documentation around that code or any manuals or anything like that. And so this is where Roxygen comes in. Um, if you wanted to do this yourself, you'd have to go in and learn uh, kind of this LaTeX style um, format for writing manuals, and it's, it's really tricky and, and pretty intricate. Um, the better way to do it, though, is just to use Roxygen. So the Roxygen syntax is you start with a pound sign, um, which is a comment in R, and then you follow that with a single quotation, um, and then a space, and then you can put uh, whatever kind of Roxygen documentation you want on here. So the first line is just going to be the title of this function. Um, over kind of the basic description, so I'll just say it's square and number. Um, so we're just documenting this function that we created here. So the first line is just square and number. Um, a little more descriptive line would be something like takes in any numeric value and squares it. Okay, and then there are a few different uh, parameters that you can specify within Roxygen. Um, and these are all, uh, start with the pattern of an at symbol. Um, and then you basically, uh, you have autocomplete here in our studio that'll tell you all the different options that you can provide um, for this function. So some of the basic ones would be uh, param, which allows you to specify every parameter that your function accepts. So we'll say param x, which is a numeric value to be squared. Um, another common one would be return, which specifies what your function is going to return. So um, the square of the input. And then uh, the one other one that we'll want to specify is an annotation called export. Now export uh, defines what your package will and won't export. Um, and so in this case, we're telling it that we want the square function to be available to other users of our package. So if you don't put the export function, then no one will be able to see this function when they load your package. So it's just used privately or internally within your package. Um, if you add the export annotation, then other people will be able to use it. So we'll, we'll go ahead and export this function. Um, I've saved this file. So now when I click build and reload, um, it's going to go out and because I told it to roxygenize on build and reload, it's going to roxygenize this document. Um, it's going to recognize that there's this new function that's being exported. It has this kind of information in it. And if we go look in our directory, this new man directory has been created. And if I look in square.rd, this is that complex syntax I was telling you about um, that basically defines how you document a function in R. Um, this was all generated for us uh, using Roxygen, so we didn't have to write any of this ourselves, which is great. It saves us a lot of time. Um, but that manual is now available, so when I clicked Build and Reload, um, when I go back to my help page, if I refresh this, you'll see that I now have a function documented. And if I click on that, 
um, you'll see that it's generated this page for me um, that correlates to the documentation that I created. So the title up here is now the title of this function. Um, we have a description, which is the rest of this text. Um, we have one argument that gets accepted. It's called x, and the documentation's there. It returns um, this value, so that correlates, and then it gets exported. And what the export function means is that now that because my package has been loaded, um, when I run the function square, it'll actually work. Um, and so again, if I were to share this package with other people, um, as soon as they run the library in my package, uh, they would be able to take advantage of this function that I've exported uh, from my um, package. So just as one more quick example, um, we'll create a new function that cubes a number, sets a param x, uh, number to be cubed, and it returns the cube as the input. We won't export this function, and we'll see what happens. Turn x cubed. All right, so now when I build and reload, this cube function has been created, and actually if I go into the help file, you'll see that I actually have documentation for it as well. Um, so Roxanne created the documentation, Yet, when I go to cube a number, it's going to give me an error. It doesn't know how to. It doesn't know where this function cube is. It's not. It hasn't been exported. So, I want to go in. If I wanted that function to be available externally, I tell it to export, build and reload, and then as soon as my package comes up, I'm now able to cube numbers, um, and because that's been exported from the function or from the package. Um, so this is kind of the, the gist of how you would create a package. Now, if you want to actually share this with other people or upload it to CRAN or, or anything like that, um, or Bioconductor, then uh, you may want to go in and go to more, and you can either build a source package or build a binary package. These are the tools that you'll want to use um, when you're uploading or sharing the package with other users. Um, the one other thing that may be useful would be uh, being able to check your package. So when you build, it'll perform kind of a basic sanity check just to make sure that your syntax is valid and things like that. Um, but when you go into check, it's going to do a much more thorough investigation to make sure all your parameters are properly documented, all your functions are where they should be, things like that. Um, and so if I run check right now, though, I'm actually going to get an error, um, I believe. And that's because I don't have uh, some of the LaTeX dependencies installed on my computer. Um, and so you're, you're going to see PDF LaTeX is not available. Um, and, and by default, that's not going to be available on a Mac or on, on a Windows machine. It's a little easier to get installed on a Linux uh, setup if you're in there. Um, but by default, you're, you're going to have to take some, take some time to actually get those dependencies set up, um, which can be a little bit tricky, but um, there's, there's good documentation out there. Um, if you're not really worried about actually sharing your package on CRAN or anything like that, you can turn that off um, by using a dash dash no dash manual switch. Um, and so basically what you're telling it here is when, when you check the package, don't even bother creating the manual. Um, and that's what you need PDF LaTeX for. So now when I run check, it won't try to build the manual. And so it's just checking uh, all of these things that it's listing out here. So making sure all my functions are properly documented and things like that. Um, it's not going to try to build the manual. And so it's going to tell you that the check succeeded. If I were missing uh, some sort of documentation on a parameter here in one of my functions, for instance, it would give me a warning there telling me that um, you know, you may be missing some documentation, but it looks like it's good. And so we'd be able to actually go in and build the source package. And then if we go out and look at that, you can see we've actually generated this package here um, that we could actually start sharing with other people, um, assuming that we had some sort of meaningful uh, functions or data that we actually wanted to share with them. So that is it for creating our packages. Uh, hope you learned something.